Hi, I'm Garrett Town with AM Solar and today we're going to be talking about system sizing. Proper system sizing is the first step in designing a mobile power system and the team at AM Solar has developed a very efficient method for finding out what equipment you need and what equipment you don't need. Let's start with a quick overview. Energy is generated by solar panels, your alternator, shore power, or by a gas generator. Energy is stored in flooded battery banks, AGM battery banks, or lithium battery banks. Energy is converted in charge controllers, converters, and inverter chargers. I like to think of solar power system design in terms of a financial analogy. If you think of your power system in terms of money, the charging sources are your income, the battery bank is your checking account, and the loads are your expenses. Battery capacity would be like a limit that the bank puts on how much money you can have in your account which isn't realistic. And the inverter capacity would be like a daily ATM withdrawal limit. There are no credit cards in this analogy. Let's start off with some common misconceptions. One of the most common is solar panels power my loads. Wrong! Solar panels charge your batteries. That's all they do. You need to size your inverter according to your solar array. Wrong! Your inverter has nothing to do with the size of your solar array. The inverter is sized based on the wattage of your loads. You need a certain amount of solar to run your loads. Wrong! You have multiple charging sources that can be an alternator, shore power, or you can have a big enough battery bank that it doesn't matter if you're only camping for a short while. You need to size your battery bank based on the size of your inverter. Mostly wrong. The battery bank is just a matter of how much power you want to store, but if you have a high capacity inverter, you need to have enough battery capacity that can handle that current and not dip in voltage. Like if you were running a microwave or a hair dryer or something like that, you need to be able to have at least 300 amp hours of battery capacity. You need to size your solar array based on your battery bank. Mostly wrong. With lead acid batteries, it's a good idea to be able to top off your batteries regularly to maintain their health, and we do that with a properly sized solar array, which is about one watt per one amp hour. But really, if there's other charging sources or you don't need to fully charge your battery bank every day, it doesn't matter. AM Solar is a premier mobile power system installer and retailer. Correct, that one's actually true. There's no misconception there. When I first meet with a customer, one of the things I ask them is what do you plan to power when you're not plugged into shore power or running a generator? Based on their responses, I'm able to come up with a rough system design that helps them figure out how much solar wattage, battery capacity, and inverter wattage they need. This video will cover that process. If you let lead acid batteries, which includes AGM and flooded batteries, sit for a long enough time, they'll gradually discharge, which could lead to the battery being completely ruined. For that reason, a lot of people like to install battery maintainers, which is typically like a 10 watt solar panel uh, with a PWM charge controller. Very cheap, but it's not something we do very often because the labor involved in that is about the same as the labor involved in a much larger system. A typical cell phone could take about 2 amps at 5 volts, which works out to 10 watts of power. If it takes 2 hours to charge your phone, your system needs to be able to discharge 20 watt hours of energy. Cell phones can charge from USB outlets where no inverter is needed, or from a standard electrical outlet, where I typically recommend a 250 watt inverter system so multiple phones can charge. This is a very small amount of energy. 20 watt hours works out to 3.4 amp hours of battery capacity. With this in mind, I typically don't worry about the size of the battery bank for people who only want to charge a cell phone. If a person had an expensive battery bank, I might recommend a battery protect device to keep them from accidentally over discharging their battery bank, but that's a low priority with this kind of load and the subject of another article. Laptops consume more power than cell phones, about 80 to 150 watts, and typically only charge from 12 volt outlets. If you plan to run a laptop for 4 hours per day, that will work out to about 600 watt hours of energy. For easy and pretty accurate math, let's assume a solar panel produces 3 watt hours per day per watt of solar panel. To run a laptop for 4 hours per day, you will need about 200 watts of solar. You will also need a battery bank that can store at least 600 watt hours of usable energy. To figure out the size of the battery bank, you must first convert watt hours to amp hours by dividing the watt hours by the voltage of the battery bank. 
600 watt hours divided by 12 volts equals 50 amp hours. Since you can only use 50% of your battery bank's rated capacity, you need to divide that number by 0.5 to get 100 amp hours. You will also need an inverter to get the 120 volt AC output. I recommend at least a 500 watt inverter so multiple laptops can be used along with maybe a cell phone charger. TVs and stereos are similar to laptops but consume a little bit more power. And depending on how hard you rock, that could be a lot more power. When I was young and cool, I had a 2000 watt stereo system in my truck and when I was blasting it I only saw about a thousand watts before the sound started getting distorted. If you have a powerful stereo system with subwoofers you may need a substantial battery bank. For example one hour at 1000 watts will consume 83 amp hours of charge or the equivalent of a 166 amp hour battery bank. But most people don't use that much and can get away with an 800 watt inverter. It is important to note that stereo equipment that runs on 120 volts AC needs a pure sine wave. Modified sine waves have a square wave which can put some uh, distortion, add some extra harmonics into your sound and give you kind of uh, an annoying buzz. Experience has shown that DC refrigerators consume about 360 watt hours of energy per day or 30 amp hours. Of course this would fluctuate depending on the ambient temperature in the model, but 30 amp hours per day makes for easy math. Another thing to consider is that refrigerators don't consume full power all the time. They only consume full power when the compressor is on. This on time is called the duty cycle and it typically works out to about 25%. For a DC refrigerator, I recommend at least 200 watts of solar and at least 200 amp hours of battery capacity. Since it's DC, no inverter is needed. If you type the make and model of your residential refrigerator into a Google search, there's a good chance you will be able to find a data sheet with an energy guide rating. I like to follow Home Depot links because the energy guide link is easiest to find. When you open the energy guide link, you will see an estimated yearly energy cost in dollars and below that a number followed by kilowatt hours per year. This kilowatt hours per year number is the one you want. You will need to convert this to watt hours per day. For example, if your refrigerator is rated at 404 kilowatt hours per year, divide it by 365 to get 1.107 kilowatt hours per day. Then multiply it by 1000 to get 1107 watt hours per day. If you divide that number by three, like we said earlier, three watt hours per one watt of solar panels per day, you will come up with an approximation of the amount of solar wattage you will need to offset that refrigerator. In this case, that works out to 368 watts of solar. I typically tell people they will need at least three 170 watt solar panels to run their refrigerator, but they better get four just to play it safe and not risk ruining their food. You should also have at least a 2000 watt inverter to handle the startup surge of the compressor and at least 220 amp hours of battery capacity to handle that current. A coffee pot might run for about 10 minutes and consume about 800 watts. This works out to about 130 watt hours or 12 amp hours of charge or the equivalent of a 24 amp hour battery bank. Make sure your coffee pot isn't the kind that consumes power constantly to keep a reservoir of hot water at all times. This type of coffee pot is very inefficient for off-grid living. Also, check the specifications on your coffee pot to confirm the peak wattage draw. We have seen some that surge as high as 1500 watts. Knowing this surge will help you size the inverter correctly. If your coffee pot is rated for 800 watts, I'd recommend playing it safe with a 1200 watt inverter. Because coffee pots run for such a short time, solar isn't much of a consideration, but you should have a battery bank that can handle the current surge and have at least 200 amp hours of battery capacity. Hair dryers consume about 1500 watts and run for about 10 minutes per day. I don't recommend anything less than a 2000 watt inverter and a 300 amp hour battery bank for a hair dryer. If having dry hair is super important to you, which it isn't to me, you're going to need about 90 watts of solar to offset the consumption of your hair dryer. 
In most blender or microwave applications, I recommend a minimum of 2,000 watts of inverter capacity and at least 300 amp hours of battery capacity. I have successfully operated a Vitamix on a 2,000 watt inverter, but I know there are some smaller inverters like the Bullet that might be able to work on smaller inverters, maybe even an 800 watt inverter. As for microwaves, I think there's some that work on a 1,200 watt inverter, but you'll want to check the return policy before you buy anything if you're trying to run that inverter, I mean, trying to run that microwave microwave or blender on a smaller inverter like anything less than a 2000 watt inverter. When people tell me they want to run an air conditioner in their RV, I tell them they're looking at at least a $15,000 price tag and they're going to need lithium batteries. Typically, we need about 200 amp hours of lithium battery per one hour of run time on a 15,000 BTU air conditioner. Some people spend upwards of $50,000 on a system to run an air conditioner, and if this sounds crazy to you, park in the shade or head north. I always recommend lithium batteries for air conditioner systems. For every 200 amp hours of lithium battery capacity, you will get about one hour of runtime on a 15,000 BTU air conditioner. You will also need a 3,000 watt inverter with an easy start system to take up the startup surge. As for solar, we are limited by how much energy the sun puts out per square foot versus the square footage of your roof. Simply put, the sun doesn't put it out enough energy on your roof for continuous usage of an air conditioner, but it is possible to get a couple hours of runtime per day. Other system sizing questions might involve selecting the correct charge controller for a particular solar array or choosing the right breakers or fuses or circuit protection or figuring out what size of cable to run, but that will have to be in another video. In the meantime, an AM Solar technician will be happy to help you. Thanks for joining us at AM Solar. I hope this video was helpful. Please subscribe to our channel and happy camping.